All right, welcome everybody to UPL Season 15 Primal Preseason PR with Craft and T for you. Well, hello there. So for anyone that's never watched these, we're just going to go over uh, all the teams in Primal League, which is a Nat Dex point-based singles league. Uh, and we're going to rank all the teams. We're going to talk about how we feel about all of them, what we dislike. We're not going to talk at all about what we like because we are not positive here. No, and, bad vibe only. And at, all the way at the end, we're going to actually rank all the teams from best to worst or worst to best, however we feel at the moment. Um, I'm going to start at the middle and work my way down and up. Yeah, so uh, important things to note, legacy moves are allowed, you know. Uh, so anything pre-Gen 6 cuts, except for Pursuit and Hidden Power, that's allowed. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, it's net deck singles. I feel like that's pretty much about it. Uh, oh, so it's points as well. So coaches were able to pick anywhere between 9 to 11 mons. Uh, and if they wanted, they didn't have to get a mega, but they could get up to two. No one did get two. Uh, so... Everyone Probably has, smart. Yeah, everyone either has one or zero. Um, but I feel like that's enough chit-chat, right? Probably. Yeah, if you're ready to roll. All right, let's go to coach number one. Uh, Leon. This is a cool team. Oh, we should talk about how this... we're uh, rating all the teams, what we're looking at, all that stuff. All the I stuff. could. Yeah. I guess. Probably. It'd be funnier to just be like, yeah, this team is cool, and then move on. Um, but I'm looking for your hazard setters, how many and what types of hazards you can set, the types of hazard removal you have to counteract your opponent's hazards, the biggest speed gaps you have among your Pokemon, which is a contentious subject that people will fight me on, and I will keep fighting, the amount of good priority users you have. Um, so I'm not going to count it if a random Pokemon has quick attack, but I will count it if something useful has a priority move. And then I'm counting your clerics, your wish, heal bell, aromatherapy, revival blessing, uh, ways to top off your Pokemon uh, that have taken hits that you didn't need them to. And then yeah. finally, I'm looking at your two Terra captains uh, and giving opinions on what I think of your choices, particularly the types of the mons and whether or not those mons are particularly good for Terra. Yeah, and so for Terra, it's important to know it's like a middle tier Terra only, uh, middle tier and below. So no like high uh, tier uh, Terras. You're not going to see like, I don't know, Walking Wake is a Terra or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so for me as well, I'm going to also talk. Uh, I like looking at how many absorbent immunities do you have, which uh, I don't know. Primal League was very disappointing this time around with that. Uh, we look at type inclusiveness. How many of the 18 types does your team have? Uh, spoiler alert, no one got 18 out of 18. Damn, Origin had two. Yeah. And uh, probably the most important ranking that you're going to see here is the fashion factor. How fashionable, how cool looking is your team? So, yeah. I can respect that. Okay, with that, uh, let's go ahead and actually talk about Leon's team. All right. I like Leon's team. I like that it is a sun team that feels like it can function outside of sun. With the potential exception of Venusaur, all of the sun bits are fully useful mons outside of sun. Uh, but it also always has that mode to turn on and off as needed. Uh, so yeah, like you said, it's a sun team. Walking Wake here is uh, it's interesting. We're going to see how that goes. You know, it's a new mom this time around. Uh, and so I do like the sun team as well. I mean, who doesn't love Great Tusk? It's the better version. Correct. Um, I will say, there is no psychic type, there's no fairy type, and there's no steel type. And those are kind of important, I would say. Yeah, even looking at the Terra types, it doesn't doesn't add any of those back in. Yeah. Psychic, I'm yeah, kind of into. More, more debatable. Like you can probably run some psychic moves on somebody. It's whatever. But a steel and a fairy, I'd say, like you kind of want those somehow. Those are important. Yes. I do um, want to ask. Yeah. Why do we have Dita Weedle Whoop? Uh, sticky webs. Okay, I guess. 
It's the the only reason. It the only other moves of note it gets are I think knock off and pounce. So it's here for sticky webs. All right. Okay. I will say I do think this team could be an interesting user for Trick Room. It does have like a pretty slow side. But does yeah. it have any setters? No. It has no Trick Room setters. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Good luck, I guess. Convince your opponent to set Trick Room for you so you can win with it. But yeah, um, that's my main thoughts on this team. Uh, so, interestingly enough, this has one of the lowest absorbent immunities uh, in in the whole league at 6. So, not a lot of your mods are going to be able to just avo like avoid or nullify an attack, which is always useful if you're able to do that somehow. You know, personally, I love doing that, but you don't really have much on this team that can do that. Yeah, one thing I will say as a pro for this team, it has one of the lowest speed gaps for any of the teams at 20. Um, and even then, that 20 is between two very slow Pokemon. So it's really a speed gap of 19 between things that actually matter, um, which is... Not a great gap to begin with, but everyone across the board in Primal has huge speed gaps compared to what I saw in Origin. Yeah. Origin was quite interesting. Uh, with that, any final thoughts for this team before we move on? I want to know why Brute Bonnet is a Fire-type Terra. You've already got Fire-type on the team. Uh what you could like fighting would have been better fairy i don't think brute bonnet really should be a steel type but fairy could have been interesting uh and needed for your team getting stab close combat would have been great for this i don't see what fire is doing here really yeah all right with that on to coach number two tclrk pokemon Yeah, I don't, I don't know what all those letters mean. I'm trying to, like, guess. It's like Tickle Rick Pokemon or something. It's almost Pickle Rick, but it's not. No, no. Um, one of the things I like about this team, it can do a lot of uh, switching tactics. I think uh, four different Mons have, like, four of the different, like, switching moves. So like U-turn, Volt Switch, Flip Turn, and I believe there was one more that I can't think of off the top of my head. But there was one more. Probably Someone baton a Baton Pass, pass in here? Probably. It's probably Baton Pass. And I think that's always nice when you're able to, you know, shuffle your mons out mid-battle like that and just switch them, do that chip damage. It's always nice. Always helpful, for sure. Um, I don't love this team's ability to get rid of hazards. It has two defoggers. They are Hydreigon, which almost always has something better to do, yep. and Lurantis, who is perfectly content to defog, but is such a bad Pokemon that... <laughs> so, if you can stack some good hazards against this team, they're going to have a hard time getting rid of them. Yeah. And, like, I think there's, like, you know, some good mons on this team. It's got Ursa Wound, it's got Spectre, and Hydreigon, of course. But overall, I don't feel the vibe from this team. But yeah, so I, I think there's, like, some good mons. I think I like the Dragon Fairy Steel Core here. It's pretty good. I think it's all right. It's There's better ones in the league, in oh, this nice. division, even. Or not division, but like in this uh, conference. Mm -hmm. But this one is solid, right? Like yeah, yeah. Dash Bun can heal, Bronzong sets hazards and is defensive, Hydreigon hits for damage. I like it. It's a good, and reliable one. What's great about Dash Bun as well, well big body. So it can take those fire type hits for Bronzong and boost itself up. That's true. I do like that. Always great when they give Amon a great ability like that, cries in Palisand. Right. We'll never forgive so them. close. <laughs> we'll never forgive them. But yeah, uh, any final comments for this team? Um, 
Not really, I don't think. It's a relatively solid team. I like it. All right, with that last team of Lycanroc, uh, Sage Spike. This team doesn't have a single bad Pokemon on it. Everything is reliable. I mean, how can you hate this team? It's got Mudsdale, Sikwazar, Registeel, and Slowking. Not to mention Chandelure. Yeah, everything about this team is pretty good. Yeah, this is a well-optimized team. Um, I like their Terra Captains. They've got a good diversity of hazards and five different ways to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm going to nitpick, this team only really has one useful priority move, and that's yeah. Bullet Punch on Pangoro. And that's not ideal. Yeah, you want to... You never know when a priority move will set the match for you. But yeah, like I really love the defensive core, as I immediately stated out. Uh, I will say, I know I talked about Trick Room earlier, and in Origin PR, I talked about Trick Room a lot. I think this team can actually do stuff with Trick Room. It has two setters uh, that can you know, help for the slower side. Stuff like Mudsdale could actually use it. And I think that's pretty good. I think you could. I just think this team is better off ignoring that and going straight for uh, more tried and true strategies. Yeah. The option you know, is there, though, if you need yeah, it. Yeah, if you need to. You never know one week that just might be the way to win. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, hard not to love Mudsdale. You know, stamina's great. <laughs> what I love even Shit more is this Mudsdale's also ghost type sometimes. <laughs> They didn't want to be outdone by the Spectrier on the other team, so now they also have a Ghost Horse. Why are we killing all the horses in Lycanroc? Yes. And of course you have Chandelure with, you know, Infiltrator if need be, or in general, Flashfire. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I like this team. It's nice and reliable. With that, would you like to give your uh, divisional rankings for Lycanroc? Uh, sure. I think, and I went back and forth on this for a while, uh, I think I like Leon's team more in division. Um, I think it is a consistent and reliable uh, Sun team, and I don't think that any of the weak links are really holding it back. Um, I like Sage Spike second. Uh, I think it's perhaps none of the pieces really feel like they're exceptional, but all of the pieces feel good. This is a very good team. Uh, Going to be very consistent throughout its battles. Uh, and then I have T C L R K P K M N. I don't know how to shorten that to something. T C L R K uh, Pokemon. That's not shorter. <laughs> uh, I think this team has a couple of gaps that are going to be hard to fix, um, particularly hazard stacking against it. Uh, and the fact that the top end is not as powerful as I think it needs to be. Uh, Spectre really needs that first kill to really get boosting. Um, but, yeah, it's not a bad team. Just I think the other two outshine it. Yeah, uh, and I realized, you know, we forgot to say, obviously, all this is our opinion, so if you don't agree, you're instantly banned from the server, and uh, there was something else that I already forgot of. Great job. But, yeah. Um... Very professional. <laughs> we always forget things here. I'll figure it out in a minute. Um, oh, we ignore week one matches and coach skill. That's what it was. Correct, so yes. Just on your, your team on paper. Yeah, we ignore the names. Yeah, we... Just because some of you are new, we don't know your skill level. It's not fair to rank you against people we know the skill level of. And in theory, these are supposed to be week, week zero PRs. We just didn't get them done before week one started. Yeah. Uh, we take so we're ignoring any week one matches. Yeah, we're taking into account the trades that you guys made during week zero, but we ignore matches and we just pretend that we don't like it's all by the same coach, right? Or like it's by right. no coach, just on paper. So, yeah. Right. They're all being piloted by me for the purposes of this PR. Yeah. With that being said, we can move on to our next division, starting with Rentoid in Dragapult. Gotta love some Hasuian Electrode. It's a good mod. 
it's good mon, but I do have to question. There's three steel. Is this not the team? Or do they trade? I feel crazy now. There's Never two. Mind. Lucario and Cesar. <laughs> I don't know why I thought there were three. Uh, but yeah, there's no fairy type on this team in that case. I'll go with uh, that of course there is. Look at that Hisui and Electrode with fairy type Terra. Yeah, I mean, I think you kind of would like a main type Terra or main type fairy. But, eh. Um, I also think, I don't know, maybe this is wrong, but I feel like Rotom and Bundle being on the same team is a little bit unnecessary. I they, can, they both I have think they're both Hydro fine Mist. together. You know, they both have Hydro Miss. They both like... only have Hydro Miss. Well, I think Bundle gets chilling water too, but we're not pretending that's a real option. Yeah. And, like, I think Rotom is obviously a little bit, at least in my opinion, I think Rotom's a little bit better just purely because it's electric type. And I think that's a little bit more useful. Bundle um, is a better Pokemon. Rotom right. is a more consistent Pokemon. Yeah. Um, so on any given week, Bundle has more potential. But across all of them, Rotom has more. Yeah. So I feel like maybe swap one of those two out for maybe a different electric or a different water ice type. I think that might I be mean, the move I mean, here. Do not get rid of Bundle to get a different water ice. There are no other water yeah, ices like that better are water worth it. If you want to keep like a secondary water, if that's the case. But yeah, I, I don't feel like it's a great idea to have them on the same team. Here's my problem with this team. It's a big problem. Iron Bundle has 136 base speed. The next fastest Pokemon has 90. That is a huge gap. There are so many Pokemon that fall between them. Just in this division, that's Sneasler, Mega Diancie, Gliscor, Uxie, Cinderace, Jugulus, Pomot. That's a lot of things that can shave a lot of points off speed and throw them into bulk or switch to a an attack or special attack boosting nature because there's no need. And that extra bulk is going to cost you kills. Did I cut out again? No, you're good. Oh, okay. It's quiet for a while. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the terror types here? I love them. I think these are really good. Um, Hisui and Electrode, keeping grass and gaining fairy. Uh, very reliable. Fairy type is a great type for Hisui and Electrode. Anything that fast with stab fairy is really good. Uh, Lucario, keeping fighting was the smart choice for stab moves uh, because close combat is the most reliable move Lucario has. And Terra Normal, anybody who gets stab extreme speed is gonna do great. Back to the E speed. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, like, I think there's some okay mons here. Like, you got Tinglu, that's not bad. And I guess you got Glamora. <laughs> Did you say Tinglu's just not that bad? Tinglu is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tinglu's good. Uh, Glamora's okay, I guess. I, I think what this team would really love, besides something, anything in between 90 and 136 speed, is it would really like a cleric. Tinglu cannot heal itself in any meaningful way. Having something that can pop up its HP every once in a while so it can keep on setting spikes and whirlwinding is going to be very important. All right. With that, any final words before we move on? No. Pretty cool team. A lot of cool mons on it. Just one weakness that I'm having a really hard time getting over. Okay. With that, let's go on to Goose's team. This is a scary team. It is. I mean, you got Dragapult, Diancie Mega, Sneasler, and of course, because no one took uh, the Big Rock, you took Little Rock. Knackle Stack. Yes. Um, also, Primarina. Like, this team is just stacked with threats. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like this team has strong priority. 
It lacks Wish, but it does have two sources of Heal Bell, which I think is kind of nice. Uh, although one of them is Mega Diancy, so probably it only has one functional Heal Beller. Um, it's got good hazards. It has not a ton of hazard removal, but it's got some options. you got a Spinner, a Defogger, and a Magic Bouncer. Uh, so there are choices there. I like your fire and water here. I'm known for not liking NFEs, but I don't like the Thwacky pick. I don't understand the Thwacky pick here. I feel like it probably could have been a different or better grass type. Agreed. Because I don't think Grassy Terrain's doing enough for you to justify yeah. having Thwacky. Um, and to be fair, this was a week zero trade for them, because they previously had Komala instead of Thwacky. That's. I'm not sure if I think Kamala was better than that than Thwacky, but I think I also don't feel like Thwacky is important. Grass type is better than having Kamala, but at the same time, I think you could have picked a better grass type. Oh, I see. I see what Thwacky's here for. Thwacky's here for Sneasler for Unburden. I think there were better ways to go about that. Interesting. Yeah, um, I am surprised that Knacklestack could have been a Terra Captain and was not picked. I think uh, if they were given a third Terra Captain option, they probably would have gone for it. Yeah, I think Steel-type Uxie is pretty cool. Fire-type Rev of Room is really awesome. I love that Steel Fire Poison Stabs. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Yeah. All right. With that, shall we move on to the next one? I think so. Last up in Dragapult is JT. I have issues with this team. <laughs> I yeah. don't love the huge gap between Altaria and Palmot. That's a decent speed chunk of important numbers. Um, there's a lot of bulk on this team between Porygon, Slowbro, Claude Sire, Mega Altaria to a degree. But there's no real ways to heal it up besides Pomot throwing out Revival Blessing, which is not a great crutch to rely on because you have to die and then hope that there's a turn where you can be brought back. Yeah, I mean, I like the defensive core, like you said. Slowbro, Quad Zire, P2, and sometimes Altaria is great. Um, but overall, this team feels like it's missing something, and with it being at 9 Mons instead of 10 or 11, I think one of those other missing Mon slots could have been used up. I think you yeah, should I, have taken another Mon at the very least. I think if you're going to have 9 Mons, it needs to... You need to feel scary. I need to feel like there's a 6 that are coming every week and it will be hard to prep for, and I'm not feeling it on this team. Yeah, because like what the main thing people are probably going to be prepping for is Cinderace? Probably. Yeah, Cinderace or Jugulus, I guess. Like Jugulus is scary, don't get me wrong. That's that's a powerful mod, and ground type terra for it is excellent. But there are other things that are scarier in your division and across other teams as well. I'm not feeling the like the fear factor isn't here for me. Yeah. Um Yeah, it's not great. Um definitely like if you can I mean you're gonna have to swap out one of your mods to do this because you only have one point left but like grab another mon somehow and make it a good one yeah don't draft trash great advice top tier yeah. i mean that's the only advice people should be giving uh if we don't have any more comments what's your ranking of dragapult division i have jt in third for this division um uh, because i i like i said i'm not Looking at this team, I'm not afraid. I'd be happy to face this team with just about any other team in this league. Um, in second place, I have Rentoid. I like everything I see on this team, except maybe Galarian Corsola. I'm not, I don't see that really doing a whole lot for this team. But man, that huge speed gap right in the middle of the really important numbers is killing me here. I love Goose's team. I think it's a cool team. Even if I don't agree with some of the choices on it, I think it's a well-crafted team, and I think he's going to do very well with it. All right. 
with that, we shall move on to Infernape Division, which has first up is Gators, with quite the interesting team. As was pointed out, every single round in draft. I want to know how he afforded all this stuff. I want to know how the points worked out that he has a full 11 Mons, but none of them feel like throwaways. And, you know, people were complaining at about 105 probably not being enough. Definitely 100 was not enough, but we bumped it up to 105. So I think we're lucky that we didn't make it 110. Otherwise, Gators would have threatened you guys even more. I think at 110, he just gets a second chain pow and wins the league. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so we mentioned this in the Origin video. But the UPL has been around for like 15 seasons. And somehow, for no entire reason, Tropius just get drafted like by everybody this season. Never drafted before until this season. What happened? <laughs> like what I, happened? I I think it Tropius became a lot more scary this uh I guess this year because Terra became a thing and Terra type Tropius is genuinely scary, which means more people got exposed to it, which means even if Gators isn't picking Tropius as his Terra type here, he understands the power behind the subseed set. Yeah. With that being said, if we want to talk about scary, should we talk about the fact that this team has Chien Pao and Urshifu? <laughs> like, holy shit. No, I don't want to talk about that. I'm already having nightmares. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is terrifying. Um, one Mon that's a little bit questionable. Avalug Hisui. I think if he didn't make it his Terra type to Fairy... I think I would have had more issues with it. Even then, Fairy, I I maybe would have picked Steel or Poison for it. Yeah. But I do, like, Fairy's going to be good for it. Uh, I like it. If it wasn't a Terra type, I'd, I'd get a lot less. Um, yeah, no, I feel pretty good with this team. I'm this interested team. to see Terra Dragalgy do work. Terrifier is a cool type for it. Yeah, so um, I was going to say, it is missing a fire type. The only fire it has is through Terra. Yeah, I don't think that's a huge loss, to be honest. As and especially when, when you do get a fire type through Dragon Algae, it's adaptability fire. That's real cool. All right. With that, we can probably move on to the next team. Which is I think Conrad's so. Team. Probably one of the hotter debated teams of the season, from what I've seen. I personally like this team. I'm a fan. There's one thing about this team I really don't like, and that is that it's an electric terrain team, right? There's Tapu Koko, and then a bunch of things that benefit from electric terrain. But then you've got Dondozo here, who relies very heavily on the move Rest, and he can't use it. And then there's Breloom, who relies very heavily on the move Spore, and he can't use it. So I think those pieces, those are good Pokemon. They are reliable Pokemon, and this team is actively hindering them from being the best they can be. Yes, yeah, see, I was going to say I like the electric terrain. <laughs> I so do I. I think that part's a really good, well laid out team. I just think you have other stuff that isn't using the terrain and is actively hurt by yeah, it. Yeah, I guess you just need to make sure you're careful about how you're playing around the terrain that you're setting up. I mean, that's probably why they don't have multiple terrain setters, just to prevent that from happening. I would guess. I mean, drafting Pincurchin at this point would be complete overkill. Yeah. Um, I think that would honestly be a bad choice. I do like that you have uh, Dozo plus Zatu here, because obviously Dozo for obvious reasons, and then Zatu is great for magic bounce itself. You know, avoid any chip that the enemy might try to do to you. Yeah, I like that kind of juxtaposition of blocking status moves with Zatu and blocking basically any setup with Don Dozo. Yep. That's a cool duo, uh, as long as you're not facing a Pokemon that can do both and therefore break through one or the other as needed. How do you feel about this team having nine mons? 
do you feel it's missing anything without, say, a temp? Not necessarily. I wish that there was something, there was a little bit more, like, to field a team of six without electric terrain and feel like it was a good team. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like if you're bringing specifically Mons without thinking of electric terrain, this team is getting hurt a little bit. With that, we can probably move on to the next team, which is Zach T's team. This team has the best core in <laughs> any of the teams, like unquestioningly. Fairy Dragon Steel, Roaring Moon, Iron Valiant, Jirachi. That's crazy. How was this allowed? It is insane that they got some very strong mods. Now, I do want to point out, I think there's a couple questionable mods on this team. Funnily enough, I think the questionable mods are the ones that you got after trading. Uh, Swalot, Golomolola, and Licky Licky. I think the biggest problem with those is Swalot, which, similar to Tropius, I don't think people have ever drafted it, or like it's very rarely drafted, and then both singles leagues drafted it this time. But um, I think, because you had Quillfish previously, and I think that's way better than Swalot, specifically Quillfish Hisui. Yeah, specifically Hisui and Quillfish is what was on this team, and I think that was much better than Swalot is. Yeah, I think that would have been a better to keep that, because Swalot's kind of not the greatest. Um, Licky Licky, I can kind of see use, I guess. I like yeah. Licky Licky. It's, it's not, it's not the you know, worst, it's, yeah. It's got a right. decent wish. It's got Heal Bell. It's got Knock Off. It's got a stupid, powerful explosion. Yeah, it's all right. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think as well what's nice about this team, it can potentially use some sun. Because you got Mega Camera up. If you can set up sun, it's going to be doing huge firepower. And obviously it's great for Roaring Moon as well. Yeah, I like that. Um, these Tarek Mons, I think they're interesting. Jolteon, right? It's an electric type, and the obvious choice is to turn it ice. But Zach did not do that. He made it grass, which I think is cool because it still gets around uh, some types that give electric trouble, like particularly ground. But it isn't as frail as the ice type would be. So I think it's an interesting choice. I don't know how, if I feel like it's the right choice, especially when you've got Serena right there, but no ice types. But I I'm, I am don't think it's a bad choice. I just think it's interesting. Yeah. Alolan Golem. I don't know how I feel about it being a Terra Captain at all, but flying is a really cool type for it because you take its one quad weakness and you make it an immunity. And I think if you time that right and you buy a turn using it, you could change the course of a game pretty easily. And that's neat. I like stuff like that. Yeah. And like we said, it has a great Dragon Fairy Steel Core because how in the world did you get Roaring Moon Iron Valley and Jirachi on a team? Yeah, that's yeah. scary. Yep. Um, I think the Waterfire Grass Core, it's pretty good. I mean, especially when you have Milotic right there. But yeah. With My one complaint here, right? Because I got to have one because I'm only allowed Always. to be bad, right? Bad vibes. There's no good priority on this team. <laughs> like, as far as I can tell, the only priority moves that anything have are Jolteon and Gligar with Quick Attack, and neither of those is a viable move to be using. I don't think Valiant gets Shadow Sneak. I'm going to check that right now, but I don't think it does. I want to say no. But I could totally be wrong. Right, because Gallade and... Uh, oh, it does get Shadow Sneak. Okay, I lied. You've got one move you could maybe use as a, a priority move. That's still not a good priority move, but you've got it at least. All right. With that, how do you rank in Fernape Division? In third place, I have Conrad's team. I like the top half. I like the bottom half. Both of them are cool. I don't like how the top half interacts with the bottom half. That I don't think is as cool. Um, I also don't 
particularly love Mega Bennett. I feel like if you're going to have a team that's missing a bunch of uh, Pokemon because you tried to draft heavy, and you're going to have a Mega, it should be better than Bennett. Um, in second place, I have Zack T. Pretty cool team. A uh, couple of Pokemon that are kind of iffy on it, although you do, like I said, best core in the whole league. This is an amazing core, and you're going to be riding that every week. So I think the real problem is going to be if people can figure out a way to consistently beat that, uh, you're going to be in trouble. Because the rest of your mods aren't as scary. And then we have Gator's team, which I think he might have slipped you money for extra points or something, because I still can't figure out how he afforded it. This team is really cool, really strong, and I'm so glad I don't have to face it. With that, let's move on to the final division, Blaziken Division, starting with Giovondude. Team's fine. There's quite a bit of solid mons on this team. You got Gudra. It's not Kusui and Gudra, but it's still Gudra. You have Lando, and you have Cerule Edge, which are three mons that I really like. Cerule Edge is such a cool mon. So and I think as well, what's really nice about uh, all those mons, our Belova is there to help support them. Try to decide how much the 41 point speed gap between our Belova and Gudra matters. Because right, it's slower stuff anyways. Like A lot of stuff in the 70s and 60s isn't running a ton of speed to begin with. But there's a lot of Pokemon that can just like pile on damage now. There's another big speed gap. They've got another one that's uh, 28 on the other end between Starmie and Zeraora. That one also is not great, but there's so few things that can take advantage of that one. Speaking of Starmie, I do quite like your uh, Firewater Grass core here, because obviously it's a Rule Edge. Obviously, Starmie and Arbolove is quite nice as well. Probably and backup nice fire in Volcarona, yeah. too. So, yeah. yeah, I agree. That's a really cool fire water grass combo. Um, especially because you can swap Cerule Edge from fire to grass using your Terra Captain for it. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty neat. Yep. And, you know, I'll say, like, a lot of the teams so far that have had nine mons, we ask, like, is that enough? Should they have gone for one more? I think this team is doing fine with nine mons. I don't think it needs another. That's fair. I think this is another team where no individual mon scares me all that much. But I'm also more scared of all the parts of this team than I am of some of the other teams with nine mons. I think this one does a better job of squeezing good value out of all nine. But it still doesn't feel as stacked as I think a nine mon team should feel. Any final comments before we go on to the next team? Mm, no, I think it's pretty good. All right, with uh, you've got no cleric. You will probably regret that at some point, but your team doesn't like scream for one like other teams do. Okay. With that, let's move on to Krumel. Now this Krumel's team... got a great hazard game. Now this team love has this hazard. He's sweet. Is that bonus points for you? Well, we were just talking about Gudra, so here's Gudra He's sweet. The better Gudra. Yeah, sadly, yes. Yeah, the cooler Daniel. Yes. Um, so yeah, I quite like this team. Uh, you got really amazing mods. You got Gudra Heesui, you have Mega Walpony, you have Enamorous, and Nidoqueen. The mods I'm not 100% sure on. Giraffarig and Frogadier. I think Frogadier is just there mostly to be hazard stacking because it gets toxic spikes and spikes. I could be wrong on that. I'm not entirely sure. I'm sure it does, yeah. It, oh, it gets those two moves for sure. I'm just not sure if that's the reason yeah. it was drafted. I mean, um, well, Giraffe Rig could be cool. Get those, so it's like... Needle Queen doesn't get spikes, but it does get toxic spikes and stealth rocks. Yeah, so I don't know. That feels redundant. Then again, for like two points... You could probably yeah. swap out Frogadier and Giraffe Rig for like a four-point mod that's 
decenter-ish. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Giraffe Rig, because it's really bulky with a Violite. A Violite but, but a Sap Zipper could be good? Question mark? The bulk was never the thing holding Giraffe Rig back. It was how weak it is and how... It's got a decent move pool, but it doesn't have anything wow in there. Yeah. But it's also this team's only source of wish, which is bad. Yeah, I think you could probably swap Frogadier and Draft Rig out for like a better Mon combined. If you take out those two, that's four points. You could probably get something good with that, I think. I don't know what the actual tiers are, but... Yeah, I'd have to look, but like, there's got to be something in there that could be a good wish user for this team, like Glaceon or something. Yeah, like... I think that would probably be better. And uh, we have Stack Attack here with Fighting Terra for those extra body presses. Absolutely a chef kiss moment. That's beautiful. And we also have Yen Mega here as a Terra with Ground Type. Another chef kiss moment. I think this is the best two uh, Terra Captains for any of the teams. Any, uh, what are your thoughts on this team? Any other, Anything else? I like just about everything about this team. I think it's really cool. I think it has a lot of good stuff in it. I, It's like, it's so close to perfect. I almost think Giraffe Rig is not as big of an issue as I'm making it out to be. But Giraffe Rig, I think, is the weak link here. Yeah. All right. With that, on to the final team. Sounds good. Oh no, it's Howl. I think this team is filled with the most Pokemon that I like, but I don't know if it means that that is good. Yeah. I mean, Soaking Gower's good. G yeah. No, there's, good. there's great pieces here. Slitherwing's good. But then you got. I don't know. I feel like some of the other stuff, like Milk Tank, I guess, is okay. Sure. Dedenne, okay. Sure. Then you got like a little snow core here. I like the little snow core. I think that is the right amount of mons to commit to that because you, like, it's not a super reliable strategy. I'd almost like to see Satitan in there somewhere, but Arctozole, I think, is going to be a good fit in that team. How do you feel about Seismitoad being out of rain? Fine. Water ground is a good typing. It's only got one weakness. It sets rocks. It can do knockoff stuff. It's got water absorb. I think it's a good mon. It would be better if you had rain, but I don't think it's one of those mons that needs rain to be good. Yeah. I mean, I quite like the firewater grass core here. You have Sceptile, Chiyu, and Seismitoad. It's pretty good. I think this is a weird fairy dragon steal because uh, Sceptile is a terrible dragon. Yes. Ninetales and Dedenne are both pretty bad fairies. And Skarmory is a fantastic steal, but it's holding up the whole trio by itself. And it is yeah. also holding up all of your hazard removal. It is the only thing on this team that can remove hazards in any fashion. And while Skarmory is a good defogger, it you know, this team really wants a rapid spinner. Because it wants to be able to hazard stack. Um, I don't like Dedenne. Dedenne is a bad Pokemon. I think it's a waste of a Terra Captain here. Um, although it might have been the only thing that could be afforded with Arctozolt. Arctozolt is a great Terra Captain. I think that's super uh, cool. I think, no, they should have been able to do way more. Because it went up to like 11 points as the max. So they should have definitely been able to pick something else, I think. Okay. I don't love Dedenne here. It's not even like filling a speed tier gap, because Chiyu and Miltank are one point below it. Yeah. It's You've already got a fairy. You've already got another electric. Yeah, I, can, I don't I mean, see what Dedenne brings to the field here. The problem is it's also a one point, so I feel like if you swap it out, you're probably not going to be able to find something better, necessarily. So you might need to swap out two Mons and meet in the middle somewhere. I mean, like, is Pikachu one point? Pikachu wasn't drafted. Probably. Pikachu's got 90 base speed, so it plugs a speed gap. It's stronger. It's got better moves. It's got extreme speed. You could Terra extreme speed. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Dedenne's bad. 
that's that's the whole that's the, vibe of the past three minutes. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, with that, what are your rankings for Blaziken? I guess. Uh, I think that in third place I have Giovanni Dude. This is it's a cool team. I think every Pokemon is good. I just I'm not scared of it. Like I don't. Besides maybe a Cerule Edge sweep or a good Volcarona sweep. There's no Pokemon on this team that I think is going to just like blow people out of the water. Mm -hmm. uh, in second place, I have Howl's team. Uh, cool stuff. I think Arctazolt is going to do phenomenal things being a Terra Captain. I like the bulk on this team. Chiyu is obviously scary. Uh, and I think if you prep too much for Chiyu, you actually just make the Arctazolt game easier. Slitherwing is a very reliable mon. Nice, strong priority there. It is the only priority on this team that it matters. Uh, but it is good. And then, so in first for this group, I have Krumel, who has a full mo set of 11 mons. So even though he's got a couple that I don't think are great in Girafferig and Frogadier, he's still got nine that are great. So even if you scratch those two out entirely, this team still has as many good mons as the other two. And it's got the best Terra Captains by far, the best Mega. Uh, Enamorous is going to be really cool this season. Hesui and Samurott. This is a great team. All right. With that, any final words before we move on to the overall PRs? I think it's really important that everybody remembers that these are just like our opinions, man. Yeah, um, and so also, come fight me in the comments. Um, yeah, think, come fight me in the comments. I think what's interesting, for Origin, we were quite different about our opinions. Here, we were quite similar, with a few very notable differences. Yeah, there's a few things that fly in different directions, but for the most part, very we were on the same page here. <laughs> but yeah, um, would you like to start, then? Sure, am I going low to high or high to low? Uh... Hi to low. Hi to low. All right. Starting off the number one team in Prima League. This is Gators. This team has no misses. This is a great team. Even the weakest mons on this team have uses. It's pretty much the perfect team that I can... Out of what was drafted. In second place, we have Leon. I think that this is going to be a really cool team to watch. It's going to sink or swim with Sun. Uh, even though all the pieces can stand alone, this team is really going to shine most when the Sun is shining. Uh, that was terrible. I apologize to all of you. Uh, but I do like Leon's team in second place. Third place is Krumel. It is a bunch of reliable Mons. A couple of pieces of fluff thrown in there just for flavor. Uh, but it's got the best Terra Captains and if those two aren't cleaning up the team, there's still plenty of other things that are going to do a good job with it. In fourth place, I have Sage Spike. This is another team where everything's reliable. There's there's no misses here. Uh, maybe a little bit more priority wouldn't go amiss, but beyond that, this team is really cool looking. Uh, in fifth, I have Goosefragger. There's a couple pieces I don't love in here. I don't love Thwacky, like I said. Knacklestack feels like a weird choice without the Terra type, um, especially because Uxie doesn't benefit from it as much as I think Knacklestack would. But this team has some scary offensive presence, uh, and I'm looking forward to see what it does. In sixth place, I have Zach T. Uh, really top heavy team. The top is phenomenal. The bottom, not so much. They're not bad. They're just, you know, like a shrug. Uh, in seventh place, I have Rentoid. Uh, everything fits. Everything's cool. Corsola feels a little weird. But man, please trade something and put something in between 90 and 136 speed. There's so many good mons that just got so much better against you because of that gap. Uh, after Rentoid, at eighth, we have Howl. I like this team. If you get rid of Dedenne and put Almost literally any other Pokemon in this team. I like it even more. Um, it's got cool pieces. I'm really happy to see Mega Sceptile got drafted. Uh, I want to see you do good with this, 
uh, do well with this team. At ninth, I have Giovanna Dude. Every piece is good. No piece is exceptional. And I want to... I want to look at a team and feel like, oh yeah, that's a threat. I need to prep for, you know, X, Y, or Z. I feel like I could just prep my mons and then show up to the battle, and it doesn't really matter if I looked at your team or not at this one. And 10th place, we have TCL Rick Pokemon. It's a cool team. Ursaluna is very scary. It's This team has a great Fairy Dragon Steel combo. Um, the top half, the fastest Pokemon are... All right. Spectre being hard countered by anything with a normal typing uh, or anything that is uh, able to eat eat the status for like the Will-O-Wisp hack set. It kind of lets this team down on the top end. So that's why it didn't make it quite as high as it could have, even though it has a really good middle. Uh, in 11th place, I have Conrad's team. Like I said, two of these Pokemon rely on sleep to function. The other half is kind of negating it. Um, Zatu as a Terra Captain doesn't super impress me. Dondozo, great Terra Captain. I'm guessing, just looking at how expensive my brain thinks these Pokemon were, that Zatu might just have been the only choice. Um, but otherwise, neat looking team. And then that leaves 12th place, we have JT's team. This team is super bulky, but I don't feel it supports its own bulk as well as it needs to. Uh, and the offensive pressure isn't enough to make up for that. Um, so I think it's close to being a really good team. It's just missing a few key pieces to uh, glue the top and bottom parts together. Yeah. All right. With that, uh, I'll go over mine now. So my number one is going to be Gators team. Like we said, it has it's a really great team it's got some really nice stuff uh it has chan pao and urshifu so i don't think anything else should really be said in all honesty yeah you got those two it's over number two which is probably our, our biggest difference i put conrad's team at number two i personally really like the uh, electric terrain i really like all the mons on there I know, you know, we talked about how, like, the sleep, uh, you can't sleep and you can't rest and you can't spore. Because of it, I think you can fairly easily work around it. Uh, I like that Zatu is there to bounce back any, you know, uh, setters or anything like that. And obviously, of course, you have Dozo as well. Number three, I put Goose. Uh... It's another team with just really great mons. You have Dragapult, you have Sneasler, you have Diancie Mega. It's really good. And you have, you know, small baby rocks, which is also good. Again, interesting that both leagues, we had baby rocks drafted, but not big rocks. I'm definitely not calling it rocks because I forgot their names. Knacklestack. Uh, well, I know Knacklestack. I can't remember the big Garganical. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and then number four, uh, I put Giovon, dude. Uh, another team that I quite like. You have uh, really nice cores going on. I like the Gudra. I like the Starmie. I like the Lando. And, of course, Through Wedge. I think it's really nice. I, I Again, it's just really nice Mons. Um, with nine, it doesn't feel like anything is missing. And your Firewater Grass core is really solid. Fifth place, I have Krumel. Uh, again, good mons. You have Gudra Hisui, Lopunny, Amorous Nidoking, like I was saying. Um, I'm Again, I don't know what Frogadier and Giraffe Rig are for. I think you can probably swap them out together and get something better. Uh, you don't have a great Firewater Grass Core, in my opinion, but you have a beautiful Steel Dragon Fairy one. Uh, sixth place, I have Sage Spike. Uh, oh, it's this team. Yes, I do really like this team. It's the Mudsdale team. You got Mudsdale, Registeel, uh, Cyclazar, and Chandelure, plus Slowking, of course. Uh, I think all the Mons here are really solid. I don't think it needs an 11th Mon. I think it's just a really solid team, and it just will fully depend on how you play, in all honesty. Uh, 
In seventh, I have Zach T. Um, I think there's a lot of weird choices, and I think some of those week zero trades honestly brought you down. I think if you hadn't made some of them, you may have been in a little bit of a higher place. Like, definitely Quillfish, he we would have brought you up instead of Swalot. Um, but you do have, you know, uh, Roaring Moon and Iron Valiant, which is a huge plus to your team. In 8th place, we have Howl. Like we were saying, you know, Dedene is not a great mon, but some of the other stuff that you have is pretty good. You have Sloking Gower, you have Slitherwing, you have Skarmory, which can do quite a bit. And I think there's a few trades and a few fixes that you need to do here, but overall it's not that bad. It's mainly like Dedene and some of the lower stuff that you need to fix up. With that, number nine is Rentoid. Uh, so this was the team that I was saying, I think having both Bundle and Rotom Wash is redundant. I'm going to stand by that. And like we were saying, Corsa Gower as well, probably not as necessary. I think it would do better with a 10th Mon, potentially. And I think you can probably swap out uh, either Bundle, honestly, probably Bundle. I would swap out Bundle, in full honesty, get a different water type. Uh, and I think it would be a bit of a better team. Probably even Quimora. I don't know. 10th place, we have... TCLRK Pokemon. It's tough. I, you know, Spectre's obviously very strong. Hydreigon's very strong. Dashbound is very strong. I like the Steel Fairy Dragon Core, but I think this team leaves a bit to be desired, in all honesty. Uh, in 11th place, we have Leon. Uh, so, like we were saying with Leon's team, uh, no fairy, no steel. Psychic is forgivable that you don't have that. Um, and I like this small sun core that you have. Um, for me, I think this team looks really weird on paper, and I would need to see it in action for me to rate it higher. I think something is really off about it, and I'm not sure what it is. Um... So until I see some good action, I can't rate you any higher, sadly. And last, that means, is JT. You know, this team, like we were saying, it's bulky, but it's it doesn't have any offensive power, really, outside of, like, Cinderace and Jugulus, which I don't think are that difficult to prep for, probably. Um, it's just, can you get through the bulk? And I think for most people, yeah, you can do that fairly easily here. I think a ninth, uh, tenth mon is going to help a lot. I think you need to swap out, get some different mons. It's just a lot of bulk, and you need different things in here mixed in. With that, what final comments do we have for them? I am surprised at how big the speed gaps are on literally every team. <laughs> uh, but... Beyond that, I think they were a lot of really cool teams. For all that we like, harped on very specific things for every team, I think they're all solid teams. I don't think there is a bad team here. I think that every one of these teams has potential to win. And I'm excited to see what some of these new things do. Some of these combos I've never seen before. I want to see how they play out. Yeah, it's definitely a bit different than you know Origin, which does tiers, because with points, there's a little bit more leeway in what you can grab. So it's it's definitely interesting. With that, though, if we have nothing else to say, good luck to everyone this season. And uh, we can't wait to see all the complaints. I got my boxing gloves on. I'll see you in the comments. All right. Bye. Bye, guys.